So just a few days ago, we got the launch of the Lego Rivendell set, bringing back Lego Lord of the Rings the first time in 10 years. Now, prior to this set, it was the Tower of Orthanc that was the largest and most expensive Lego Lord of the Rings set. This set was launched in July of 2013 with a retail price of 200 US dollars. Today though, to get this set new in box, you're gonna be spending over $500. That's right, more than what the Lego Rivendell set goes for. So these two sets are almost equivalent in price, which makes it a fun comparison, in fact. Now, obviously there's some major differences like piece count, minifigures, and just overall scale between the two sets, but I think a fun comparison is in order. So without further ado, let's get this started. So Rivendell got launched on March 5th of 2023 with 6,167 pieces with of course the price tag of 500 US dollars. By Lego's count, it has 15 minifigures. Now, if you include the statue minifigures that are also in this set, it's really 21 in total, which is quite a bit. In terms of its scale, we're looking at just over 28 inches in width and 15 inches in height. As for the Tower of Orthanc, it launched on July 1st of 2013 with a retail price of 200 US dollars. It has 2,359 pieces, five minifigures, and it is in fact 28 inches in height and eight inches in width. So that's a funny little Easter egg. I don't know if that was intended by Lego, but if you lay down the Tower of Orthanc, it is actually the same width as Rivendell. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I do think that it is kind of funny. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's just me, but I, I do enjoy that. As for the Tower of War thing, this box, oh man, this box art is just fire, <laughs> like quite, quite literally. You know, I, I like the black box art of Rivendell, you know, and it's just, you know, it's a common thing between all the 18 plus sets is to have a black box, so you can tell it's an 18 plus set. This is some of the best box art actually of any Lego theme. This is up there with some of the best Lego Star Wars box art. Don't get me wrong, the Rivendell set box art is really good. I like the, you know, yellow bricks on the bottom. It's a nice accent. You know, Rivendell stands out really well against a black background like this, but this is the better box art, no doubt. So before I show the two sets side by side, I have all of these Lego Lord of the Rings and Hobbit figures, almost all of them from the two waves that we got from 2012 to 2013. There is so many figures here that are all going to be on sale on my next Whatnot stream. They are indeed sponsoring this video. And in fact, they sponsored it with a giveaway, guys. That's right, I'm gonna be giving away my own personal council of Elrond. This is a $100 plus set that'll be given away during my Whatnot stream. I have the instructions here and everything. This thing's in like peak condition. It's as new as it gets. This happens tomorrow, March 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be streaming from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. for two hours where I'll be selling all of these figures and giving away this set. Now the link's down in the description will be to sign up on whatnot that'll get you a ten dollar credit off your first purchase on either my stream or someone else's and then you'll also find a link to where you can bookmark the 4 p.m eastern standard time stream where i'll be selling all of these lord of the Rings sets everything here will be sold no matter what the price is so this is something you're not going to want to miss out on especially if you're trying to collect all of the lego lord of the rings figures thanks again to whatnot for sponsoring the video and let's get back to this comparison all right, I, I'm not gonna lie. When you put both of these sets side by side, they look pretty freaking cool. <laughs> so given that there's major color differences between the two sets, obviously there's major price differences. Well, actually not nowadays. Now these sets both retail for about $500 retail. I think we can say that there obviously is some other differences like scale. I mean, first off, the Tower of Orthanc is absolutely massive. It's towering, it looks really cool. Its footprint is actually extremely small. You can really fit this on just about any table. It's whether if you have the height space or not. Now, the type of shelves I use, these Ikea Iver shelves, these are modular so I can customize the height. But not gonna lie, it is an inconvenience to me because I have to bring up a shelf to a certain height to match this. And there's not that many Lego sets that are about this height. You know, the closest I could think of is the Ninjago City Gardens or the Saturn V Rocket. And I wouldn't really want to put those sets side by side next to the Tower of War thing. I really want it next to Rivendell. So if I have a shelf here going above these two at the same time, I'm losing so much negative space, which may or may not be a good thing. But for me, that is a little bit of a compromise. Now, obviously, if you're slapping the Tower of Orthanc on a table and you don't have anything that's above it, then this works out perfectly because it really doesn't take up as much space. 
As for Rivendell, I think a lot of people are concerned about its footprint, that it's really big and can't really fit on a lot of things. I disagree. Again, it fits perfectly on my Ikea shelves. There's a lot of just Ikea like wall hanging shelves that you can buy that are great. And outside of Ikea, you can pretty much get anything anywhere from either Wayfair or Amazon that'll fit this. Fits on most coffee tables, fits on dressers. Like you can really put Rivendell in a lot of places. Plus it's modular. So if it really is an inconvenience in terms of size, it's completely modular. We can take it apart and place it however you want. Now with the Tower of Orthanc, it is technically not a modular building. You can technically take it apart in sections. It's actually built in three sections, three modular sections, which so happens to also be like Rivendell. So I don't know if that's a, another coincidence, but it is just a little bit funny that both the sets are built in three sections or at least three stages before you get the final build. I don't know, maybe again, I'm just connecting things that aren't there, but I think that's a little funny. Now, when it comes to minifigures between these two sets, they're vastly different. Obviously, Rivendell has a much larger allotment of minifigures, but both of these sets do have their exclusive and unique minifigures. Specifically with the Tower of Orthanc, Wormtongue is actually exclusive to this set. In fact, that figure alone right here is worth over $120. It's pretty crazy to think about, but that is also why this set has gone up so much in value. But the same thing can be said about Rivendell. Now this is obviously new, it's on shelves, so it's accessible to everyone, where obviously this is a retired set. But there is exclusive figures like the brand new version of Boromir, as well as the older version of Bilbo Baggins. Those are brand new and exclusive to this set. I mean, granted, all the minifigures in this set are brand new and new versions of prior figures like Legolas and Aragorn and Frodo, they're all new. But like, if we're talking really exclusive new characters, Bilbo and Boromir definitely are the standouts. And Arwen, actually, she also is a new figure. There's so many new figures in Rivendell. But with the Tower of Warthank, not only are you getting Wormtongue as an exclusive minifigure, but Saruman also has an exclusive bottom uh, leg piece. It's a printed brick, and that is exclusive to the Tower of Warthank as well. And the Orakai figure is also rare. It's not exclusive, but it is rare because it has the uh, printed white hand on his helmet. That is definitely more expensive. I think that's like a $30 figure. Of course, you're also getting the eagle that Gandalf rides on. That's also pretty cool and unique to this set, but it also came in other sets as well. And then the last unique figure for the Tower of War thing is the Ent here. And you know what? I love this because he has a really cool, unique, function where you can move his arm back and forth with this little gear on the back of him and you could put an orc in his hand and throw him across and recreate the battle of isengard like that is just really cool there's little bits of playability in the tower of war thing now this was a 200 dollars set at the time so it was definitely far more accessible than rivendell is today at 500 dollars. i'm sure if the tower of war thing were to come out today in 2023 this would easily be a 300 dollars set given inflation and just how time evolves and Lego sets just seem to get more expensive. That's just a, a trend everybody is aware of and it's an unfortunate trend. But regardless, this was a far more accessible set. And so because of that, I'm sure, you know, the POC says 14 plus, but I'm sure kids of like in the age range of like 10 to 14 were getting this set. And so there is playability throughout this. There's like a trap door. There's an alchemy room that you can make potions and everything with. Like that is just cool, man. I love a lot of the features, but there's also features I feel like adults like me would also appreciate. Like, of course, these doors that open up to a nice tiled off staircase. I love the fact that you can put Gandalf on the very top and recreate that scene from Fellowship of the Ring. But the same case can be made for Rivendell as well, recreating scenes like, of course, the council. You have the scene of Narsil with Boromir and Aragorn, and then you have, of course, Aragorn and Arwen on the bridge. Like, there's so many things going on here. There's, of course, inside scenes of Bilbo and Frodo talking to each other. Very iconic scenes from Fellowship of the Ring, but there's also a lot of famous scenes from Two Towers with the Tower of Orthanc. So, man, ooh. These, these are top tier Lord of the Rings sets. As I talk about this, guys, as I go through this, I'm realizing just how damn well put together these sets are. And it's really showing, even with the 10 year gap between the two of them. Now, obviously when it comes to building experience and what you're getting out of it, Rivendell just takes the cake. Obviously this has far more pieces, it's far more enjoyable to build. There's colors that break up the build that you don't feel like you're building the same monotonous thing. 
Building the Tower of War thing honestly wasn't that bad. I know it's literally almost all black pieces like you're building like a Batman set or something like that, but I really didn't think it was a bad build. I actually really enjoyed it. I got through it in about four hours. Whereas with Rivendell, it took me a little over eight to nine hours to build. Also was super enjoyable. I love how they broke it up into three instruction booklets, but that is also the same case with the Tower of Thor thing. Again, so many similarities between these two sets, believe it or not, given the stark contrast of how many years is between the two, it is crazy to see how many things are actually similar as well, which is making this comparison video that much better. And then in terms of just general engineering, there is techniques I've never seen be done in any other Lego set than the Rivendell set, specifically with this gazebo and how they accomplished the engineering that was required to make this uh, structurally sound. It's incredible. Like there is really top tier techniques being utilized here. But again, also the Tower of War thing, now it doesn't use anything crazy technique wise. There are, you know, snot techniques being utilized. There's some good tile work. There's a lot of fun functionality between all of the floors of the set. And it actually has a lot more detail than I thought. Unfortunately, because of its color being mostly black, a lot of the detail gets lost, but there is a lot of intricate details that you wouldn't really see until you look up closely and compare the two sets. They both have details in unique ways. So coming to a conclusion here, man, I, I really have to say the Tower of War thing blew me away. I was ready to write this set off and say, it's cool, but it's just a giant black tower. It's so much more than that. It really is a fantastic set. And I can't believe how well it holds up in 2023, 10 years after its release. It still uses a lot of modern day Lego techniques. It doesn't feel outdated. The minifigures are still top tier. They pretty much match perfectly with the Rivendell minifigures. There's no like arm printing or anything crazy going on with the Rivendell minifigures. The most advancements in minifigures for the Rivendell set were definitely dual molded legs. That's something that the Lord of the Rings sets back in 2013 didn't have. But other than that, minifigure wise, they're equivalent in terms of quality and detail, which is really good to say. Now, obviously there's a lot of difference here, piece count, minifigure count. And so do I recommend you go spend $500 on the Tower of War thing, get this sealed in box? Probably not. I would say go with Rivendell. You're gonna enjoy the set probably more, unless you're like me and, and think Two Towers is the best Lord of the Rings film. Maybe that's debatable down in the comments. But seriously, the Rivendell set is an incredible set. I do recommend it. You know, links are down in the description if you wanna buy it, it's affiliate house of the channel. But I think there is definitely an argument to be said here that if you are a Lord of the Rings fan, I do recommend getting the Tower of War thing. I don't think we're gonna be getting a remake anytime soon, especially given on some certain leaks we got recently. It doesn't seem like that'll be happening. So if you wanna get it, probably now is the time to get it. I don't really recommend buying it at 500 plus dollars sealed. I do recommend buying it used though. You can get it for about 400-ish dollars. I think used with good condition minifigures is well worth it. Now, thankfully, this set right here is in peak condition. This is used, the one I was showing earlier in new unbox is my second copy. I have two of them, the two towers, bad joke. But this used copy that I purchased, I think a few years ago for just $300, I never built it up until now. I just had it sitting in the box. I was waiting, I was waiting for this comparison. Here we are doing it now. And you know what? This was well worth the three, $400 I paid for. I, I can't give you the exact price, I don't remember. Um, but it, it, it really does show that getting a used copy can be a good idea if the collector actually kept it in good condition. It is black Lego, so it is hard to find one without like an incredible amount of dust and grime on it. And uh, thankfully this one was really good. And so I think if you look in the right places, you can find a good deal on this set. I do recommend buying this at some point if you're a big Lego Lord of the Rings fan and you're getting back into the hobby. This is something I still recommend even 10 years after its release, but not after you first buy Rivendell. I think if you're gonna buy one of these two sets, go with Rivendell first. It's the more iconic, more beautiful set. But after that, man, the Tower of War thing is a really damn good second place runner up. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, what you think the best Lord of the Rings or Hobbit set is. I think there's also an argument to be said that Helm's Deep as well as the Lonely Mountain set are also top tier Lord of the Rings Hobbit trilogy sets. So maybe we should do a comparison of all four of those next to each other, Helm's Deep, the Lonely Mountain, Tower of War thing, and Rivendell. Maybe that's a bit too much. <laughs> but regardless, I'm so excited that Lord of the Rings is back and I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And with that said, I hope you guys have a great, wonderful day and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.